हेलो एवरी वन आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो ऑफ मार्पोल सेवेंटी थ्री सेवेंटी एट वो लास्ट वीडियो वॉज अबाउट एन एक्स वन ऑफ मार्पोल सेवेंटी थ्री सेवेंटी एट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एन एक्स टू दट इज रेगुलेशन फॉर द कंट्रोल ऑफ पॉल्यूशन बाय नॉक्सियस लिक्विड सब्सटेंसेज इन बंक दिस एन एक्स टू केम इन टू फोर्स ऑन सिक्स अप्रिल नाइनटीन एटी सेवन एंड द रिवाइज एडिशन ऑफ दिस एन एक्स टू वॉज एंटर इन टू फोर्स ऑन फर्स्ट जन details the discharge criteria and measures for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk so what are these noxious liquid substances noxious liquid substances are those which are listed in international bulk chemical code that is ibc code actually carriage of chemicals in bulk is covered by the regulations of solas chapter 7 that is uh, carriage of dangerous goods and by uh, marpol annex 2 that is regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk both conventions required chemical tankers built after 1st july 1986 to comply with the international code of construction and equipments of ships carrying dangerous chemicals in bulk that is ibc code and under regulation 11 of annex 2 the ships built before 1st july 1986 must comply With the international code for construction and equipments of ships carrying dangerous chemicals in bulk, that is BCH code. Actually, BCH code is the predecessor of IBC code, and it remains as a recommendation under 1974 Solas Convention. I will provide you the PDF of IBC code. You can download it from the link given in the description box to read it and make it more clear. On October 2004. IMO adopted revised edition of this annex 2 and this introduced four category categorizations of noxious and liquid substances and this entered into force on 1st jan 2007 now let's discuss about those four categories so the first category is category x according to category x noxious liquid substances which if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting operations okay tank cleaning or deblasting operations are deemed to present a major hazard to the uh, to either the marine environment or human health and therefore justify the prohibition of discharge into the marine environment okay according to category x the uh, subst uh, the substance which are categorized in category x are majorly hazardous for the marine environment and they are prohibited for discharge into the marine environment next is category 1 according to category 5 noxious liquid substances which if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting operations are deemed to present a hazard you know majorly but still they are hazardous to the marine environment or to the human health or can cause harm to the users of the sea therefore limitations in limitations are applied on the quantity and quality of discharge into marine okay. so category 1 on the discharge discharge criteria limitations are applied for quantity and quality of the substances third category is category z according to category z noxious liquid substances which if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting uh, de operations are deemed to present a minor hazard okay this uh, substance of category z are minorly hazardous to the marine environment or human health or marine resources and therefore less stringent restrictions apply on quality and quantity of discharge into the marine environment okay substance categorized in category z have less restrictions on their quality and quantity for discharge into the marine environment fourth category is other substances according to this noxious liquid substances other than x y and z which at the moment do not okay which at the moment do not pose any threat to the marine environment or human health on discharge into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting operations okay so the substance categorized in the fourth category that is 
other substances are those which do not pose any threat to the marine environment while discharge into the sea from tank cleaning or the ballasting operations. Now let's see what are the discharge criteria according to the Annex 2 for these noxious liquid substances. So the discharge standards for Annex 2 within and outside spatial area. Uh, before I start, I will like to tell you that spatial area for Annex 2 is only Antarctic area. So according to the discharge standards, the ship is en route and doing a speed of at least 7 knots in case of self-propelled ship or at least 4 knots in case of non-self-propelled ship. Okay, if the ship is self-propelled, the speed should be uh, at least 7 nautical uh, 7 knots and uh, if it is not self-propelled, then the speed should be at least 4 knots. Then next is the discharge is made below water line through the underwater discharge outlets and not exceed the rate Okay, not exceeding the rate by which the underwater discharge outlets are designed. And the third is the discharge is made at a distance of not less than 12 nautical miles from the nearest land and the depth of water not less than 25 meters. Okay, the discharge is to be made uh, at a distance of not less than uh, not less than 12 nautical miles from the nearest land and in, uh, in the depth of not less than 25 meters. Now let's see what are the discharge criteria for category X. First is tank for which category X substances has been unloaded shall be subjected to a pre-wash before the vessel leaves the port of unloading. Second is the residues shall be discharged to port reception facilities until the concentration of falls to 0.1% by weight by analysis all remaining tank washes to be transferred and until tank is empty. I had discussed about residues with you in the last video. Entries to be made in the cargo record book. Next is any water subsequently added may be discharged into the sea. Fifth point is where it is not possible to find the concentration of the effluent without delaying the ship then alternate procedures may be adopted to find the concentration provided that. Sixth is Tank is pre-washed in accordance with the procedure adopted by the administration. And the last point is appropriate entries are to be made in the cargo record book. Now let's see the discharge criteria for category Y and Z. If the unloading of the substances is not carried out in accordance with the manual, a pre-wash to be carried out prior the vessel leaves the port of unloading. The tank washing is to be discharged to shore reception facilities for high viscosity or solidifying substances in category 1. First point is pre-wash to be carried out. Second is the residues, the residue to be discharged to shore reception facilities until tank is empty. And the third is any subsequent water introduced into the tank may be discharged at C. Now let's discuss about P and A manual. What is this P and A manual? Every ship certified to carry the substances of category X, Y and Z shall have an approved P&A manual from administration. The main purpose of this P&A manual is to identify the physical arrangements and operational procedures with respect to cargo handling, tank cleaning, slopes handling and cargo tank ballasting and de-ballasting. Now let's discuss about cargo record book. Uh, every ship to which Annex 2 applies must carry cargo record book with them. Each entry of cargo record book shall be signed by the officer or officers in charge of the operation concerned and each page of the cargo record book shall be signed by the master of the ship. Cargo record book must be kept at the place from where it is readily available at the time of inspection at any reasonable time. And the cargo record book shall be kept for at least three years after the last entry has been made. Now let's see what are the entries to be made in the cargo record book. So first is loading of cargo, then internal transfer of cargo, then unloading of cargo, mandatory pre-wash in the accordance with the ship's P&A manual and cleaning of cargo tanks except mandatory pre-wash. Next is discharge into the sea 
of tank washing then ballasting of cargo tanks then deballasting of cargo tanks accidental or exceptional discharge controlled by authorized surveyors and additional operational procedure and remounts okay so these were the entries to be made in cargo record book now let's see what is smpep that is shipboard marine pollution emergency plan so every ship of 150 gross tonnage and above which is certified to carry noxious liquid substances must have an approved smpep by administration now let's see what shall that smpep must consist of so first is procedures to be followed to report a nls pollution incident okay nls means noxious liquid substances okay then list of authorities and persons to be contacted then detailed descriptions of actions to be taken to reduce or control the discharge of noxious liquid substances the procedures and point of contact on the ship for coordinating shipboard action with national and local authorities next is uh, reporting requirements then steps to control uh, discharge then flow chart and checklists and the last is vessel specific information so this was about annex 2 of marpole 7378 that is regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bank i will provide you a pdf of this annex 2 so that you can learn it more about this annex 2 you can download it from the link given in the description box i will so i hope you will like the video so please click the like button share the video and subscribe the channel thank you so much